Applying artificial intelligence in the supply chain. Well, joining us today to speak about that, Sarah Strobar, Head of Sales at Onero. Sarah, welcome. Thank you, Russell. Sir, I guess the threshold question really ought to be something about Onera. For those viewers who are unfamiliar with the company, what does it do? What's the space that it works in? Sure. So Onera leverages machine learning and artificial intelligence to help enterprise retailers and brands make better decisions across their supply chain. Okay, well, we set the interview up by talking about uh, applying artificial intelligence, AI, in the supply chain. So as you look across the supply chain landscape, where are you seeing this technology being utilized? So I think we're seeing it used in a couple different ways. Um, from kind of pre-season demand planning, through to merchandising and buying decisions, through planning and allocation, um, and then in-season decisions in terms of inventory availability and assortment and what to actually make available across the supply chain, um, through to then where to fulfill that inventory from across distribution centers and now also stores, um, and also then all the way through to route optimization and last mile even. Is this uh, vertical agnostic? I mean, you're seeing this in any type of industry. Yeah, we are seeing it across industries, and I think it's definitely extensible outside of retail. Um, but our our focus primarily is retail and brands, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of pure play e-commerce and some CPG as well. Now, I know you're seeing this being implemented by a number of companies out there, but do you see applicability beyond what's going on right now? I do. I actually think there's a lot of opportunities to leverage machine learning and AI. Um, I think it is definitely a challenge, though, to actually operationalize those capabilities. So applying AI uh, outside of the lab and bringing it into the market and commercializing it and productizing it, I think that's where the challenge exists. Well, let's walk through that. Let's drill down. If we were to talk about the difficulties or the hurdles that one you know, encounters in operationalizing AI, what would they be and how does one go about surmounting them? So I think there are a lot of challenges, but I think it starts with the data itself. Um, so if you think about artificial intelligence, it's really m identifying patterns and making better decisions and predicting, making predictions about business outcomes based on data. Um, so the data itself is very difficult to collect and to curate and to cleanse and to get into a format that's actually usable for the business. So I think operationalizing AI requires um, technologies and the skills to actually engineer the data. Um, to build pipelines to actually bring that data into the organization and ingest it in a way that you can then use it to apply analytics, run models on it, and make better decisions. You know, earlier you and I were speaking about the black box and the difficulties surrounding that. I wish you would walk the viewer through that. Give us an idea of just what the difficulties might be there if one is going to be making successful decisions. What do you say? So I think there is a lot of concern around black box and uh, artificial intelligence in particular, when it actually starts to enter the business, I think there's a lot of concern around how is this machine making decisions? Um, and so I think some ways that you can address that are, you know, first of all, by solving very discrete problems and isolating the problem space, you have more visibility into how decisions are being made. Um, and then also kind of being transparent about the computations and the decision-making process that the software is actually running and that the models are running. Um, that transparency across the entire organization and across different business units is really essential. And then I also think um, you know, having visibility of metrics is also really important. So looking at the actual business impact and sharing that cross-functionally is, is pretty critical as well. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Sarah, you've uh, pretty much convinced me that I need to make uh, an investment in this type of technology. But I'm not the one who strokes the check. That's going to be the chief financial officer. So make an argument to him or her a laundry list, if you will, of the benefits that the company is definitely going to receive if we make this kind of investment. What would you tell that person? So I think I would say to that person that if you focus on a very discrete problem um, where you can quantify the current state, 
So you can actually understand how decisions are being made today and track those decisions and document those decisions. Then you have a method for comparing those to the way that the AI model is running the machine and is actually making those decisions. So comparison is very, very important and having a closed loop in terms of what was the decision making process before and then what is the decision making process today is really important. Um, and then to a CFO also I would say that it's very, very important to have a signal on whether the algorithms that you're running or the artificial intelligence that you're running um, is accurate. So what is the signal that you're getting in terms of accuracy? And then that accuracy and improvements in, around the decision making is, what's gonna, is what is going to have business impact for the organization and that's where you're going to see the ROI. Let me ask you a final question just to look into your crystal ball because anytime we're talking about implementing technology that hasn't been around for a long time, there's always some degree of resistance by people, a wait and see attitude. Where do you see this, uh, uh, this type of technology operative in the supply chain, let's just say over the next five years, where's it going? So I think in terms of the future uh, for the supply chain, I think as, um, as different retailers and manufacturing even and CPG, as they make decisions in terms of where to make investments in their supply chain, you're going to start to see that they're pulling those decisions even closer to the customer. So it's going to start to impact customer service, customer experience, customer promise state, um, and they're doing that in order to compete. Uh, in the market with you know, large players like Amazon, for example, in the e-commerce world. So I think you're going to start to see AI being applied closer to the customer, in directly impacting the customer experience more and more. Well, it's an exciting technology and this has been a great drill down into it. Sarah, I know you were busy here at the uh, conference, but you found time to speak with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Russell. Appreciate the time. That's Sarah Strobar, Onera, speaking with us today about artificial intelligence and how it's going to benefit your supply chain. Thanks for watching.